Welcome to part two of the 171 project. In this video, we're gonna come out of the basement level to the main floor. If I'm treating you like a little kid, it's because of your intelligence. <laughs> hey Kyle, did you hear what I said? Yeah, I heard it, that was good. Jay, did you hear what I said? No. Ah, it seems all right. Now you notice the saw there? That is the skill saw 10 and a quarter inch cordless beam cutting saw. I'm writing up the review for the Journal of Light Construction, so you're gonna see a lot of that saw in this video. May I have the drill? Yeah. Can I have the drill? I, mean, I, I have need the drill. the drill. I have the drill. Oh, oh you got your drill. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. I mean, I could go sleepless now. That's that kind of day. That's like old Kyle. Oh, look at that. That saw was square. I don't know if the GoPro can get that. I didn't do anything to calibrate that. Nice gotta, job, skill saw. <laughs> now I'm cutting a lot of four by eight. Basically this basement level front garage portal walls were all made of four by eight material. Um, the mud sill and the studs, king studs, blah, blah, blah. The reason for that is the eight inch stem walls. We have to fur out on either side for drywall and siding, so it was a lot easier to frame out a four by eight. Again, beam saw came in perfectly handy for this. Both mom. Yeah, your mom. This is just going on and on. My mom. Your, your mom is so dumb. She put a quarter in each ear and thought she was listening to the 50 cent. Your mom's so dumb. I said it was chilly outside. She went and got bold. Your turn, Shane. Um, your mom is, your mom is so fat. She stepped on the scale and it's an error. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> okay. Yeah, nice. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's my hammer. Come on. As much as possible, we pre-attach everything to the garage header. Now this is the GL3000. It's a hybrid glue lamp. Which side is the top and which is the bottom? Here's another look. Notice the LVL top and bottom cords and the answer is... Good morning, everybody. So that beam behind me, that garage header, is the beam I posted about yesterday. Which is the top, which is the bottom? So here's the answer to that question. For those of you that didn't Google it, <laughs> it's the GL3000, just Google it. Anyway, regular glue lamb, except the top lamination is LVL. The bottom lamination is L LVL. You get the higher strength of the LVL lambs and there's no finger joining of those since they're made in longer lengths. That's why this GL3000, the top doesn't matter, the bottom doesn't matter. They're both the top and bottom or neither are. Depends on how you wanna flip it. So at that point, you just, whichever side is straighter, if there's any kind of a bow to it, you work with that. But structurally speaking, because the LVL top lamb and bottom lamb, this beam can go either way. Here's what a regular glue lamb looks like. This is from the other garage header. Notice there's just laminations of dug fur. Top is compression, the bottom is intention. It's extremely important that we don't notch those. But here's the difference. Hopefully that answers your question. I'm wet. Time to go home. Shane wants to check the diesel motor on the Sprinter because he thought he smelled something. And we thought, well, this is a great time for Shane to show you guys every single component of a diesel motor. Yeah. Well, we know there's coolant because we can smell it and it's burning. The other thing, this is one component. This is the air component. Okay, and then over here we have your your Verwenden uh, sauce, and then the 710 cap, and this cap is for deaf people only. We're not allowed to open that. Um, over here is uh, air cooled electronics, and yeah, that's about it. Okay. So because the joists run parallel with that back wall, there was a couple of special engineering details. One of which is anchor bolts 24 inch on center, two by eight mud sills, and then A35s 24 inches on center. Shane's nailing it off with a gun because it's easier on the body, especially into LSL. 
Besides that, we also had blocking 24 inches on center, all nailed off to the floor, and that's so that that uh, wall can act as a retaining wall. Minus inch and a quarter, plus inch and a quarter. So as much as possible, we prefer to attach the joist hangers to the beam before the beam goes up into the air. You have to be careful with layout though. So what I marked there was from the edge of the building, 24 inches to the center, this we're 24 on center, minus inch and a quarter, plus inch and a quarter because they're two and a half inch joists and we want to center them on the layout. After the first one's marked, just measure 24 on center, plus two and a half because that's the joist width. And then I can scribe those lines. Now I'm ready to locate my hangers. This is a gas powered positive placement nailer made by Beck America, formerly known as FASCO. You can read my view in the Journal of Light Construction. Makes real quick work of joist hangering. And yes, joist hangering is a verb. Whenever possible, we don't toenail our beams, but we use structural screws from underneath, sucks them down nice and tight to the plate without splitting anything out. What? Little known fact, but I saw Richard Marks in concert at the Puyallup Fair when I was in sixth or seventh grade. So that's how cool I was. Second of all, there's a variety of things you're seeing here, and it's not going to really make a whole lot of sense. Basically, the 2x8 wall there needs uh, sheathing. We didn't have it at the time, so we put a shim in, gapped the plate off the front, and attached that with a Simpson TP37. I didn't need to do that in hindsight. Really what I want to show is the Strong Tie CSHP coil strap that is designed to be used with your pneumatic nailer. That's what I'm nailing off right there, is I'm attaching two different shear walls across another shear wall, and the tension tie was just the simplest way to do it. I'm gonna, I know you're gonna ask me in the comments and I'm not gonna have a good response. Just know that it's very structurally sound. Well, I'm having a tough time getting into a rhythm with this thing. And it's me. It's not you, it's me. I invented the it's not you, it's me. If it's anybody, it's me. Okay, why did I write LVL on this guy? In filmmaking, that's what we would call foreshadowing. Why did I put the hanger there? Well, you'll find out. Look at all those nails. I would not want to have to be the guy that had to pull all those nails. Let me tell you, pulling all those nails, two and a half inch, one, four, eight nails, would be miserable. Trust me, you don't ever want to have to do that. Just don't do it. Never nail a hanger in the wrong place. Trust me, you don't want to do it. Hey, I know, let's make sure that they're all flush. Uh, this LBL hanger is supposed to go over there. That's how you pull nails, Shane. Let this be a lesson to you. Let's be a lesson to you, Just do it right. Do it right. Whatever you're gonna do, do it right. Yep, whatever you do, do it right. How did I get so good at pulling nails, you ask? I pull many, many nails, thousands of nails. Oh, I also have a video on how to properly pull nails. Go check it out. If you can touch it, you can catch it. Yeah, try going what yeah, wherever your layout mark is. So I got 21 foot, one eighth. Now hey, if you guys are awesome framers, why aren't you using a laser to measure those eye joints? The answer? Uh, because like all great hipsters, we are still analog. And also it was in the truck. We forgot about it. Now there's a variety of ways to cut eye joints. We try to leave them banded as much as possible. Ironically, we got a perfect factory. We never get that. So usually you're truing up one side. Kyle's just making sure that they're all reasonably close. Then he's gonna pull one measurement. We don't wanna measure all of them. We wanna measure one of them whenever possible. 
Now there's a variety of ways to cut them. My preference would be a chainsaw, but here's one way to use your beam saw. Cut through the top flange all at one time. That effectively is marking all of the eye joints. Measure once, cut once to mark the rest. And then he's able to cut two at a time without marking square, just use the square. And that's it. Nice, simple way to do it if you don't have a chainsaw. Or you think chainsaws are for hacks. Now it's time for some good old manual labor. I think we listened to the new Kylie Minogue album like 20 times that week. 14 inch eye joy, 16 on center, clear spanning 20 foot. Now, stay tuned for part three and four because we're gonna get into a whole lot of stuff like prefabbing, setting windows before you raise the wall, siding walls before they go up, sheathing the floor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.